Hello Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I want to talk about the Galileo mission, so let's do this. Galileo is a Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS for short. It's like GPS, but GPS is owned by the US. And similarly, Russia has GLONASS, China has Baidu, Japan has QZSS, and India has NAVIC. Galileo was created by the EU, and you might be thinking why we need so many when they all do the same thing. For the EU, they were worried about having to rely on the US or even a Russian system that could be disabled at any time. So they decided to build an independent one with high precision. Unlike the US, Russian, Chinese systems, Galileo was designed mostly for civilian use. It's been open for everyone. Whereas the other systems are operated by the military. And initially, GPS reserved its highest quality signals for the military. GNSS uses satellite technology and it tells us where we are and what time it is. It works using two main technologies, a signal generator that calculates where you are by using trilateration of signals received from multiple satellites. This is not to be confused with triangulation which measures the angles. Trilateration measures distances. The idea is that each satellite emits a signal and eventually that signal will hit your receiver. And it tells you how far away from the satellite you are. With one satellite, that doesn't tell you much because the signal is emitted in all directions. With another satellite added, you know the distance to both the first and the second satellite. So your location gets narrowed down. And with the third satellite added, you get your location. But these signals need to be really well controlled because the signals travel at the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers per second. That means just an error of one second could leave you 300,000 kilometers off course. That's like three quarters of the distance to the moon. So that's where the atomic clock comes in. The atomic clock provides the most accurate timekeeping and it's used to synchronize the timings between all the different satellites in the constellation. It relies on the fact that atoms have very consistent resonant frequencies. Galileo uses a hydrogen maser atomic clock, and with the hydrogen atom in it, it resonates at a frequency of 142040575 hertz. Like how we used to use pendulums to keep time, where each swing of the pendulum was one second, for the hydrogen maser, each 142040575 cycles is equal to a second. Galileo launched in 2016 and upon completion, it will consist of 30 satellites, 24 operational and six spares. With a higher precision than GPS, it will provide horizontal and vertical position measurements within one meter precision. The satellites live in three circular medium Earth orbits at 23,000 kilometers altitude above the Earth and at an inclination of the orbital planes of 56 degrees to the equator. The technology is used for navigation of cars, planes, ships, and more. As well as the open and commercial GNSS services, Galileo provides a public regulated service, PRS, a secure uh, service designed to make it more resistant to attacks. This service is reserved for governmental applications such as emergency response and the police. However, Galileo also has its problems. Four of the operational satellites have each had an atomic clock failure, but thankfully each satellite has two primary atomic clocks on board and two backups. The project cost 10 billion euros and originally the plan was for private companies and investors to invest at least two thirds of the cost, with the EU and ESA dividing the remaining cost. EU countries are not the only ones involved in Galileo, however. China has invested 230 million euros, as well as collaborations with Israel, Ukraine, uh, Morocco. Norway is not in the EU, but it is a member of both ESA and the project. 
The UK has had a large involvement in Galileo's design and development, having invested 1.4 billion euros on the project. However, when the UK leaves the EU, they'll no longer have access to some parts of the project, namely the secured service PRS, and will be less involved in research and development. Another consequence is that one of the ground control segments for Galileo, originally based in Portsmouth, will be relocated to the EU. The UK are now considering building their own GNSS system, however at an estimated cost of up to £5 billion. An alternative option is investing in OneWeb, the rival internet satellite constellation to SpaceX's Starlink. Currently they have about 70 low orbit satellites with permission to make it 650. By investing in this project, they're hoping for a cheaper solution used as a backup to GPS if that ever gets attacked or fails. But still, it's unclear if that means the existing OneWeb would be used and repurposed for global positioning, and if so, how? Thanks so much for watching this week's video. Let me know in the comment section below what you want me to talk about next time. And in the meanwhile, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.